again when it when we come to the part where it's everything oh everything let's have no music okay. and let's just hear the people because what matters is that you believe yeah. right we're not we're not just singing a song we're making a declaration of faith right. that everything yeah. come on put your hands right up on your head right here I, what does everything mean to you this morning what's that look like Everything, a car, a house, debt paid off, marriage healed, children saved. What's that mean to you? What looks impossible to you today? What seems impossible to you today? When they wrapped his lifeless body in a linen cloth, keep your hands there. Oh, I caught you right there. They, they put that lifeless body into a tomb. The disciples watched that stone seal the tomb. It seemed like he was really gone. Sure seemed like it. We know he wasn't, but it seemed like it. A lot of things are going to seem like they're impossible. That's the devil's job is to magnify the doubt and magnify the impossibility. It's the Holy Spirit's job to say that everything, Mark 10, 27, but in him all things, everything is possible. When we get to that part, David, let's just all sing, I mean, every one of our voices, a cappello, everything, okay? Let's go, come on. Nothing. Nothing is impossible. Say, Holy Spirit, if you're going to heal anybody in Dallas, Fort Worth, the USA, the whole world, today it's going to be me. I receive it now in Jesus' name. Give him one more praise. Come on, one more praise. You may be seated this morning. A super privilege to be here. And last night, how about last night, huh? How many of you got to bed early last night? I fell asleep at 5 a.m. this morning. Well, I didn't, you know, when you're in a meeting and you're getting ready to do a service, I'm so focused. I don't prepare messages, I prepare me. That's the kind of ministry that we have. I've got to be ready to hear for you. And 
so I'm, I'm there fully prepared. I had no idea what Pastor George was going to do last night. That was completely, I was in shock over there. I wanted to cry, but I knew I couldn't because I had to get to service. I wanted to laugh and shout and scream, but I knew I couldn't because I had to get ready to do the service. So I had to save all the processing for later. So it hit about midnight. I could not go to sleep. I began to realize all that was said, you know, all that was, you know, declared and proclaimed and from the buildings to the partners to the, you know, to the, you know, one of those. I've been going around all day, like just all night last night, just practicing, you know what I mean? And, you know, sometimes you, you do all that stuff at home and you come to church, you, you know, it's, it may be a little bit different for you. I looked at the clock and I said to Melanie, I said, it's five o'clock. She said, I know you've kept me up half the night. I said, well, that's what we get married for is to enjoy each other's burdens and triumphs. That's what you do. And I just want to say it was amazing. I've never had a pastor. I've been doing this 37, 38 years. Never have had a pastor. Most churches don't want you to take partners. There's some churches that won't even let me hand out testimony cards so I can d document them for our television program. Because I won't say anything publicly that we can't prove either by a doctor's report or by a written statement that can back that up. And there's many, many churches that they think if you take a testimony from that church, then you're going to solicit those people for money. Well, that, that has happened. We know that stuff like that happens. But, and so here's Pastor George up here last night saying, okay, let's give him some partners. And he looks out on the TV and give them some. And I'm not over there like, what? What kind of church is this? It's an amazing place. It's an amazing place. And I'll tell you, the cultivation that it takes to get into that frame of mind where you have people that hear God so clearly about supporting ministry and, and beyond the church. And it's amazing. And it looks to me like it's all coming back a hundredfold, don't you think? <laughs> to see the kind of miracles that happened here last night, oh my God, it's amazing. Isn't it amazing? You know, whenever you say it's amazing, it doesn't mean you weren't expecting it. It means that you're still impressed with God. Stay impressed with him. You hear me tonight? Stay impressed. Amen? I said amen? amen? Real quickly, I want to share a real quick word for you, then I want to capture a few testimonies from last night. I want to share with you one quickly. I got confirmation of this yesterday. But the last time we were here in June, I believe for the first Miracle Mountains one, there was a lady that was watching online, something like what Joan was doing that had the Hashimoto's. And this just came by way of my phone from my office yesterday. But this lady was watching online. She was pregnant. And the doctors told her that the anal glands on the baby were completely sealed and that the baby was born without a left hand. So that's what she was sitting. She's watching the Miracles on the Mountain 1. And she said the power came right through, you know, fiber optics and all, hit her. And she said, my God, and she told her husband, we have to get to a meeting. Well, Miracles on the Mountain was over by the time they could get to a meeting. So they flew to Pittsburgh where we were having a meeting there. And she came up and she said, I was watching Miracles on the Mountain from, you know, EMIC. And here's the condition. My baby has no hand. And the doctors confirmed that the anal glands are closed and yada, 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 and so forth. And I said, well, they, you know, that's what doctors do. They're smart. They read natural reports. That's what they do. You know, they read Webster's, we read King James. Come on, somebody say, <laughs> right? Is that right? See, in our world, Jack and Jill fell down, broke his crown. Jill came, laid hands on them, and healed them. <laughs> right? Right? We convert everything. And so I said to her, I said, that's what doctors do. We, we don't condemn them. We, miracles and medicine can flow together. Amen. There's no need to condemn that. There's no need for that. And I said, that's what they read. That's what they saw. And she said, she started crying. 
She says, but I want my baby to have a hand. And I said, then your baby will have a hand. No, she says, I want my baby to have a hand because that seed gets in you and it works in you. And it begins to make you think that what they're saying is true, not fact, but true. What they're seeing is a fact. If they see something on your lung, the Bible don't say call those things that be as though they're not. It says call those things that be not as though they are. Faith isn't denying everything. It's saying, I see you, Mr. Giant, but my God is bigger. Come on, say amen. So I said, your baby will have a hand and your baby will have, you know, the anal glands will open up. And she just looked, her eyes rolled around. The next thing you know, this pregnant woman's on the floor. I'm always nervous when pregnant people fall, always. Because that could turn into a deliverance service. Come on, some, right? I got a report yesterday, the baby was born, anal glands open, little left hand on the right thing. Come on. Come on. Come on. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Somebody give him all the praise. Real quickly, I do want to share a thought with you that I think can help all of us, help me. But when I saw this, I've used it to help so many people that get touched in a meeting. There's no doubt about it. They get touched in that meeting, yet their healing touch never takes them to healing. Come on, say there's a healing touch. And there's healed. You know, the healing touch is, is supposed to be a roadmap to your healing. It's not supposed to be it comes and it turns into a Cinderella event where it leaves you the next day and it's just not supposed to be like that. This story in Genesis chapter 8, it says in verse number 8 that Noah sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of all the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her feet. And she returned unto him in the ark for the waters were on the face of the whole earth Then he put forth his hand and he took this and pulled her in unto him into the ark. Very next verse says this. And he stayed yet another seven days. And again he sent forth the dove out of the ark the second time. And the dove came into him in the evening. And lo, in the mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So Noah knew. Everyone say Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. Here's verse 12, the key. Yet he stayed, yet he stayed yet another seven days and sent forth the dove which did not return again. In other words, no one knew before he knew. Meaning what? Meaning when he sent the dove out the first time, he couldn't find anywhere to land. Pay attention to this. The dove comes flying back in and Noah says, hmm, the waters still cover everything. Now think about how small the beak of a dove is. Think about how tiny that little beak is. So he sends the dove out the second time. This time the dove brings back the leaf, which had to be a tiny little confirmation. Come on, say it wasn't much of a confirmation. And he didn't bring back a branch or an olive tree, he plucked off a little leaf. Come on, say a little bit of improvement. So he plucks off this little leaf and he brings the little leaf in and Noah takes that little leaf and yet Noah remains seven more days with nothing changing. The smell of the animals is still there. Come on, everything is still confined and contained. Nothing has changed in the natural. The lump is still there. The arms still don't work all the way. Blurry, still vision's a little bit still blurry. Still bleeding a little bit. Still going to dialysis this week. Feel a little stronger, but not all the way stronger. And he's sitting there for seven more days with nothing changing, and yet the Bible says this, and Noah knew. He knew before the doors opened on the ark because he took that little leaf serious. 
Most people don't take a little bit of improvement too serious. It's sad. I mean, the, the reason God gives you confirmation is to give you hope, to give you a sustaining feeling, to let you know that the storm is already over before they say it's over. Somebody shout, the storm is over. Come on. He's there seven more days. It'd be very easy for him to think, well, he gave me a little leaf, but boy, we still have who knows how long to go. And he could get down and say, well, boy, thanks for the leaf, but I want this door open. I want this storm over. He didn't do that. Something kicked into him the moment he got a little bit of a confirmation. The moment that his glaucoma numbers dropped. The moment that his sugar numbers dropped. The moment that his blood pressure began to get a little bit better. His arm was a little bit more loose. He could walk. He, didn't, he looked a little like Frankenstein, but he could still walk a little bit. Come on. Say, he couldn't walk at all before, but now he's just limping across. And some of the people in the church are going, he don't look like he said, we couldn't walk at all before. You got to leave a meeting. You got to leave your home. You got to leave your, if you're watching, you know, EMIC on the internet, if you're whatever you're doing. But the moment that there's an olive branch that shows up, a little olive leaf, you've got to begin to ride that thing, put a saddle on it and ride it like a horse. I mean, you, we shouldn't need three and four and five and six and seven and eight confirmations and then go to lunch with people and joke about it. Boy, I tell you what, God's going to have to really have an angel show up to, to let me know this. I mean, it's going to really take some serious... Con and you're missing all of the little signs in between that that cancer has died. We've had three people this past year who came, who got prayer, fell into the power, had cancerous tumors on their liver, on their spleen, one on their lungs. They went back to the doctor. He said, it's still there. All three, when they went in for surgery, all three, the cancer cells were already dead. <laughs> already dead. So the one lady called me from the hospital. She says, the doctor say that, you know, they, she, the tumor fell out of me and fell onto the doctor's hands. And, <laughs> and she said, but, and then she asked me this question, why did I have to have the surgery? I said, lady, I don't have an anointing for that answer. Come on, somebody. <laughs> we don't always understand the way of God. The will of God, we got it. But the way of God, whether he comes down through the roof or whether he comes through Main Street, the main thing is he's on his way to your house today. Come on, somebody. Come on. But start taking anything that's happening. I've had so many people over the years where God has not given them just a little leaf. He's brought a branch. Amen. There's been some amazing confirmation that their situation has changed. I mean, if you come in shaking with Parkinson's like this and all of a sudden it's like that, let me give you a little hint. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> if you couldn't see the back of the room and you couldn't tell what time it was, all of a sudden, I can see the clock. Let me give you a little hint what that's all about. But it's not all the way, but I, could, I couldn't see that before. Anything you couldn't do before. Oh. <laughs> see, if we would begin to take more of these things serious, because a lot of people, they come up and they, they realize, well, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. That's why you hear me in all the meetings. I'll say, could you do that before? Could you walk? No. Because why do I ask that? One lady said to me, you ask a lot of questions. <laughs> I said, that's a wise man that asks a lot of questions because it means he don't know and he wants to know. Right. Questions mean you're hungry. It means you want to get to the, to the, to the narrative, the, the small narrative that God has showed up. I said, could you do that before? And she said, no. And he said, no. And people say, no. I said, well, isn't that amazing? And they look at you like, well, yeah. <laughs> well, Yeah. And I'm thinking, what's so wrong if you couldn't do this before? And it's because they had their expectations on something higher. We understand that. But we don't always understand where maybe, you know, maybe your faith level, or maybe he has a plan we don't know about. Right? We don't always understand the ways of God, the will of God we got, the ways of God. Some people he touched, some people he just talked to, some people he used oil and wine, and some people he spit on. Come on, say amen. amen. I'm glad I'm not in that last category. Can you say amen to that? <laughs> 
But the point of it is he varied because why? Because the moment that you lock him into doing something a certain way, then everything becomes easily attacked, easily ambushed, easily figured out, and you have a, you're playing a one-string guitar. God is not a one-string guitar. He's not a three-string banjo. Come on. He can heal you more ways than you can think about. He can manifest you in so many different ways. You know, I was, I was healed in the Catherine Kuhlman ministry at nine years old. I used to take all of my friends down to see her whenever I was a teenager. I'd take my friends down and I'd say, I want them to meet this lady that was used. Because they would laugh at me. They'd think, what do you mean healed? They didn't understand that. I grew up in a Catholic neighborhood. They were Catholic kids. You know, I was going to a Protestant church. We were great friends, never brought religion into it. But when I came down with cancer and three days to live, and I was taken into that meeting, I came out of there because they came into the hospital to see me. They saw death. They were preparing to say goodbye, my neighborhood friends. So whenever I walked out of there and I had had that wonderful experience of being touched and healed and slain at nine, I, I thought, oh, my. So I told them all, and they said, you're crazy. And they said, there's nobody that can do that. I said, let me show you a lady that can do that. And so I'd take them down one at a time or two at a time to, to meet her. And, and she pulled me aside and she said, Billy, I'm not your trophy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She said, I'm, I don't mind meeting your friends, but don't treat me like a trophy. She said, you're the trophy of his grace. You're the one that was healed. You're a trophy of his grace. You remember that. I said, but Ms. Coleman, she said, you're a trophy of his grace, but don't make me your trophy. And she says, one day you'll understand what I'm talking about. So later on in the years, I went into ministry, and I was praying for people, and, and I, was, I was a little frustrated because nobody was falling under the power. You know, and I'm thinking, but I, I saw that most of my life with her, here I am praying for people, nobody falls under the power. So I went to her. I said, Ms. Coleman, she said, yes, Billy. I said, nobody's falling. She said, but Billy, are they getting healed? I said, well, yeah, but wouldn't it be neat? She says, Billy, what did I tell you before? Don't make me your trophy. Make him your trophy. She said, you just surrender. She said, there's surrender issues in your life. Just surrender. And, and in time, God will do whatever he's going to do. I went, oh, man, I want him to do it now. So a year goes by. Two years go by. You know, and I'm up here just like, okay, fall. Nobody's falling. <laughs> you know? People are getting healed, you know, and I'm thinking, hey, this is ridiculous. What's happening here, you know? And at this point, I was, just, I was just looking for any kind of a sign, any kind of a confirmation. Just like you want a confirmation who you're to marry. I hope you get that one. Come on, say amen. amen. If she waters all those camels, come on, all those camels. What a confirmation that would be. That's the right woman right there. Come on, say Amen. So years later, I w it was completely out of my mind. I had left it go. I put it on the altar. I walked away from it all. And I'm in a movie theater up in a town, in a small town in Pennsylvania, me meeting in a movie theater. There's about 300 people there that night. So I walked out on the stage, and I was just not even thinking. It wasn't even in my mind. And I said, okay, we're going to open up the meeting tonight by everybody coming down to the front, and we're going to have a prayer, and then I'll, we'll do a teaching, and we'll get into ministry later. So all these people come down, 300, 350 so I was standing there, at the, and I'm up on the stage. I said, boy, it's great to have you all here tonight. I said, let's just all raise our hands, praise the Lord. We're going to really believe God for some miracles here tonight. I said, I'm going to just begin to pray. I went like that. They all fell out. <laughs> I mean, the whole place fell out. So I went, whoa, that's how you do it. Whoa, that's how you do it. <laughs> and I had nobody to preach to. I mean, the sound man. The... <laughs> Everybody was out, and they were laying on top of other people. And I was like, that's right. Don't you ever mess with me. Don't you ever mess with me again. I was like, and I didn't realize it, but the Holy Spirit was saying, I'm confirming something that hasn't showed up until now, but it will follow you all the days of your life. And sometimes we miss those confirmations of a purchase, of a relationship. You know, we miss confirmations that God has begun the healing process. The doctor looks at you and says, hmm, some improvement. Mm-hmm, we see this. Yeah, you had seven things wrong the last time I checked you, and now you're down to three. And you go, oh, 
How long, doctor, before I get the other three? You should be saying, my God, man, I'm a miracle in motion. God's on the move. I got an olive branch. Come on, this thing is over. You don't want to wait till the doors open on the ark. Noah may have had, he might have had seven more days with everything seemingly the same. Seem, come on, say seemingly, seemingly the same. How can you be the same when you're in the anointing? How can you be the same when you're singing songs that shake heaven and shake hell too? Come on. How can you be the same when you're under the power time and time and time again? How can you be the same when you're meditating on a word that has supernatural power? How can you be the same? You're not the same. Maybe something hasn't manifested yet, but it's about to. Come on, somebody. Give God a big shout. And this is where we'll see more people. If you'd walk out of here on the way home and begin to say, well, you know, I couldn't see nothing when it came. I I do see shadows. If I told you how many blind people we've seen healed that left only seeing shadows, but because they didn't quit, because they didn't get depressed because their eyes didn't open immediately. Of course we want to, and we do see a lot of them. We've seen immediately here this week. But there's people that have traveled here from distances, and some of them may be going home, you know, with 30%, with 40%. And if their thinking isn't right, they came with nothing but a problem. They're leaving with an olive leaf. Come on, say amen. Amen. And it may be seven days. It may be seven hours. It may be seven, you know, months. It may be. If someone's healed of HIV in seven months, that's still a miracle. It's something that's not supposed to happen. It's still an amazing miracle. You know, you don't judge your miracle by the way somebody else got their miracle. You don't sit in church and go, wow, I had, it took me a year. I had to go treatments and it took me a year. What's his name over there? Fred. Fred over there got healed right away and he smokes. Fred smokes. I smell nicotine on Fred. <laughs> he got his right away. And here I am, get over here taking me treatment. I, I mean, I'm glad I'm healed. Oh, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> the more you talk, the more you reveal your own ignorance. Oh, wow. The healer is moving in you, yes. you know, and for whatever plan he has for you, think of the people you're going to encourage who have to go through some form of a process. I'm sure when they got to the Red Sea, they would have rather have not gone through it. I'm sure they would just have rather got there and somehow been transported over top of the Red Sea. But what did God give them? Dry ground. Why did he give them dry ground? So they wouldn't be stuck in the mud on the way over. Come on, say in transition. transition. I'm not going to be stuck. I'm I'm bringing forth what I got. And I'm going to get the rest. I've had some. I'm getting more, and I will get it all. Somebody give God a shout. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Take it serious. Please. I I just, some of the great, one man in Fort Myers, he was hit by an 18-wheeler head on. He's one of the most crippled up people I've ever seen in our meetings. And he came in in a wheelchair. He could hardly speak. And I was going there once a month at the time. And I went down off the platform and I said, so what happened to you? I uh, hit my truck. <sighs> That's all he could say. I said, so I got inside of his ear. Because I didn't want the people to hear what I was saying to him. He didn't have enough seed in him. So I put seed in his, I planted seed through his ear. I said, look at me. I said, I don't know what kind of truck hit you, but you're going to be hit tonight by Holy Ghost. (laughs) You know, and I didn't want the rest of the people to hear that. And here's what he did. He went, oh, 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 oh. And so I I put put the prayer on him. I said, how are you feeling? He said, oh, oh, oh. The next month we went back. He came in. Here's what he said to me. Oh, my arm. I said, well, look at you. Look at you. 
So I went down on his ear again, took my mic off. I said, the Holy Ghost is after you. <laughs> he went, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Next month he came in on a walker, dragging his leg. <laughs> the third month he comes in he, and they bring him down on a walker. I said, well, look at you. Look at you. He said, oh, oh, oh. He said, I, I, can, I can see you better. I said, well, there you go. He said, I, I'm excited. <laughs> Got inside of his ear again. I said, man, this is not over. I said, you're well on your way. I, and I just boom, boom, hit him, hit him. Next week, he, nobody showed up. I'm thinking, Where, where's my friend? All of a sudden, halfway through the meeting, the back door's open in the church. Here he comes in on a cane. Somebody is taking their olive leaf serious. Somebody says, man, devil, don't mess with me. It may look like I'm in a jam, but it is over. The fourth or fifth month, I'm not sure, he came walking in, no, nothing. He walked on, the place stood, we're going crazy. He walked on and here's what he said. I'm here, Billy, to pray for you. you come in tonight and you look worse than I do. He said, you look exhausted. I said, come down here and pray for me. I'm going to come down here. And, and the place went crazy. And here's what I thought. I walked away from this. Listen to me. This anointing is a mystery to the anointing. We don't have this all figured out. We know what we know. But what I do know is, is that when that dove brought back that olive leaf, it had to be so tiny. Why do we need something so big to believe whenever there's obvious change? A little bit of change. That's all the beak could carry. You know what that is God saying? He's saying to you, man, here's a spoonful of hope. This is going to sustain you for now. And get ready because this thing's already over. Wouldn't it be great to know before you know? Wouldn't it be great to write, walk out of here today knowing that you're going to walk before you're walking, hear before you're hearing? Isn't that what faith really is? Believing it before you see it, before you have it. But how, what's, what, what's the ride there? What makes that ride there easy? By acknowledging every little bit of change. Sometimes you get on that scale. That scale, there's demons in most scales that I know. Come on. <laughs> You get on that scale and you go, I rebuke that. That's a lying spirit right there. <laughs> right? Right? And you think all that fasting and all that sacrifice and low carbs and high protein and I'm lost two pounds in two months. That's terrible. <laughs> and people get discouraged and quit. Because something didn't happen fast enough or they didn't see it like the lady on TV who says, look at me, look at me, look what I did. Good. You know, we all can't be Chuck Norris. Come on, say amen, you know. <laughs> and the idea is some of these greatest, greatest miracles, the blind, the Lou Gehrig's disease, these late stage cancers, they're all so beatable. But you have to yield to the way he's doing it in you. And if that pain is gone, so that's why you hear me up here in these meetings, all these meetings. Where's your pain at? It's not there. What do you think of that? Well, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? <laughs> well, I don't know. Let me see. Let me, let me. Yeah. Well, it's, it's so much better. What's that mean? What do you think that is about? I told one lady, I said, how better is it? She said, oh, oh. 50%. I said, so if I promised you a million dollars, but I can only give you 500,000 tonight, she said, I'd take it right now. <laughs> so when you put in the money, 50% is give me that. Come on, somebody. But when you're talking about your recovery, you're thinking, oh, 50%. Grab a hold of this. 
I'm going to say it again. Noah stayed in the ark with everything the same. And all that he had was a tiny little leaf. And it says, and Noah knew. Take every little sign. Don't wait for four prophecies and a dream and a vision. And don't wait for the doctor to confirm everything. A lot of doctors, thank God for people like Dr. Colbert and some of the other doctors we know that walk in faith and believe in miracles. But a lot of the doctors, I mean, they're not there to confirm your miracle. They're there to tap into your insurance company. You know, they're there to say, hey, nothing has changed. Nothing's any better. You, you have to have this surgery. You have to get this apparatus. That's why we pray. That's why we speak to the mouth. And that's why we fast. That's why we worship. Why? Because we serve a God of intervention. Come on, see, anywhere in the journey. He can step in. He can abbreviate chemotherapy. He can abbreviate dialysis. You don't have to go 18 treatments. You may start 18 treatments and think, boy, where's God? He's about to show up on treatment number four. Well, he hasn't told me that because, well, you're not listening. You don't honor the, the, the little olive branch leaf that he's been sending you. Begin to honor these little olive leaves. You know what I'm saying? And some people are afraid to admit it. I had one lady bring her husband. She, he said, I'm a Baptist. I said, well, we love the Baptist people. He said, well, I don't believe you. I don't, I'm, I'm here because I'm a wife. I said, well, your wife loves you. So I said, she said, would you hurry and pray for him? She said, his back is so bad. He said, it is not. She says, it is. I said, don't fight here in church. Don't fight. <laughs> so, so I said, I'm going to come down and pray for you, sir. He says, well, don't push me down. Don't push me down. I said, I promise I won't push you down. I won't even touch you. I'm just going to release Holy Ghost. He said, holy who? I said, the Holy Ghost. I said, you go to church. He said, I'm a Baptist. I said, well, we love the Baptist. So I go down and I'm standing there and just said, Holy Ghost, touch this man, move on his body. Well, she's interrupting me. How is it? How do you feel, sweet? How do you feel? I said, would you leave me finish the prayer? <laughs> he looked at her like, I'll talk to you when I get home with them from this meeting. So, so he looked over at her after a little while and he said, you know, I'm feeling something awful funny. You know, he said, is this man a witch doctor? He said, you bring, I said, no, I'm not a witch doctor. I'm, I promise I'm not a witch doctor. I'm just a person. We have this treasure in this earthen vessel that the excellency of the power may be of him and not us, right? I said, this is Holy Ghost. I'm just working with this guy. And he looked over. He said, well, I am, I am feeling something. She said, well, honey, that's really good. And she looked at me. She says, keep, keep going. <laughs> I said, ma'am, please, please, please. Please just leave this alone. I wanted to say, ushers, could you remove the wife? <laughs> you know. <laughs> and finally, he looks over at her and he says, where's the he said? I'm impressed. That's all he said. And she says, did you get it? <laughs> he said, I'm just impressed. I said, that's amazing, isn't it, sir? I said, yeah. And he, and I, and he said, and I, and I said, I'm not a Baptist. He said, you're not. What are you? I said, I'm the Holy Ghost. He said, well, could I have some of whatever you have? <laughs> now, listen to this. Here's a man here who acknowledged the olive leaf. See, it gives you something to fight with when you leave the corporate place. You got the word to fight with. You want to fight with? Come on. You want to stand on what is already written. But you also want to stand on what you experienced. You can't, be, you, you can't let the devil steal what you know you felt. You can't let the devil steal the fact that the lumps were removed from your breast or whatever part of your body. You've got to say, my God. That means he's going to get, the, one lady said, well, the lumps are gone, but what about the cancer? I said, well, it's a good sign where I come from. If the lumps go, it's a good sign he's working on the other stuff too. Yeah. Well, how come he couldn't do it all at once? He's probably really busy today. I don't know. <laughs> and people, just, they, they get into that wonderment of what the way they want it done. Right. Amen. Surrender to his will 
but also surrender to his way. And leave a meeting thinking, honey, I'll tell you what, I praise him. My head don't hurt nearly as much. It's like, it's like nearly gone. That'll give you hope. That'll build your faith. That'll get God to come down and see that he's, you're honoring what part he did do. That you're acknowledging that his fingerprints are all over your recovery. Come on, somebody give God a big shout. Come on, put your hands. I just wanted to share that quickly with you. Come on, say, I need to pay attention. Every little olive leaf that the bird, the Holy Ghost, brings to my life. Every microscopic change. Something I could not do. I didn't have the stamina. I didn't have the mental capacity. I didn't have the memory. And now it's coming back. It's not all the way, but it's on the way. Somebody give him a big praise. Come on. Come on. Come on, give him a shout. Oh. Woo. Any testimonies from last night? Quickly, come on. Some people last night, they got, come, sir, come, quickly. Just give me a couple. Give me about 10. I don't know. 10 is a couple, I know, too. But in, come on, right here. This big man's coming. This lady right. I saw a lady in the hotel. She's sleeping in the hotel we are. She said, I can't be there this morning. And I'm thinking, you're the exact lady I was thinking about. She was in a wheelchair over here. I don't know if you remember last night, I think it was. I never got to her. I was on my way to her and she jumped out of the wheelchair, ran past me and ran down that alleyway. And I, and I thought when I left the meeting, did we, who is that lady? Here she's in the lobby of the hotel this morning. She said, we can't be in the service this morning. We're on our way back to blah, blah. I think it's Atlanta. No, it's up here. It's an hour north of here. I'm not sure which town it is in Texas, but it's right up north. She said, I'm the lady who jumped out of the wheelchair last night. And she said, I'm a pastor of a church up north of here, about an hour north. And she said, I had both hips replaced. I could not walk. I had to be brought in the wheelchair. And she said, the power just hit me as you were walking towards me. And it, I just jumped out of the chair. I'll never be in that chair again. Somebody give God a shout. Oh, what happened? What happened? I had nasal polyps. In you what? My, I had nasal polyps. In this, you had nasal polyps? In this nostril, and I couldn't breathe through my nose. And, and I couldn't sleep well because I had to catch my breath because I was breathing. So she couldn't sleep well because she had nasal polyps in both nostrils. And you came last night? Was that last night that happened? And they just left? Uh, I, was, I came because you called, called something else, but there were polyps. And I came up and uh, I couldn't go because the usher stopped me. So I stood there. You couldn't and go because what? The usher stopped me. So I was standing there. <laughs> <laughs> Which usher was that that stopped you over here? <laughs> just teasing. But what's funny about this is this, the word of knowledge was polyps on the colon. So you can't limit him. He exceeds your expectation. That word triggered her with the polyps in the nostrils. So that's why we don't like legalistic thinking. You got to flex with God. You know, he's way ahead. That's amazing. So you, they're gone? And you slept well. Yes, I did. And what happened to you? No, we just came with you just came to support her. And you're the mother. <laughs> yes. And has anything happened to you? No. Uh, no. No. Actually, I was serving. I was serving in there. So I was releasing my faith, um, you know, for her. And I saw in the, in the, um, in the children department the yeah. video and she stood up. Yeah. Because, you know, as a mom, I'm always like, stay in the world yeah, yeah, yeah. before you go to bed, read this, yeah. uh, take her to healing school, yeah. and all that kind of thing. Sometimes you feel like, okay, she's not getting it. But I saw her, and I said, in there, I said that's my daughter. You saw her going up. Yeah, I saw her standing for a Mama, while. Mama, you did your job. <laughs> you did your job, part of the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody give God a shout. What happened here? I came to be healed from cancer. You came to be healed from cancer. And uh, I brought my nurse practitioner with me. Yes. So uh, 
But you called out not last night about bulging discs. Yes. So I wanted to be made whole. Yes. Well, earlier in the morning, God healed my eyes, and I can read my Bible oh. without the glasses now. Oh. And then you called out about the bulging discs, and so I said, well, I'll take that too. So I jumped up and came up here, and then I, I, I jumped about three feet back that way, and then on the floor. But, uh, I, you know, I know when, my, when she told me, she had to come to me and tell me, she says, uh, you've been diagnosed with cancer. And I looked at her and I uh -huh. said, I understand what you have said. Sure. But in the name of Jesus, yeah. my God says, by his stripes, beautiful. I am the healed. Beautiful, beautiful. And she looked at me and she sat there and she's here with me oh, today. she's here. She's here. Where's she at? She came. She heard I was coming here oh. to be healed. Oh. And uh, she uh, said, can I go? And I said, come with me. Where's the doctor? Terry, stand up. <laughs> come on, Terry. So she's receiving wow. healing today, too. So, uh, wow. Come on, give God a <laughs> shout. Come on. Wow. What do, you, what do you think of this? What do you think I of this? I am healed, but not only am I going to be healed, but she's going to be healed, too, today. And all the others that come to her office, we're going to be able to minister that healing to them too. So, so you're, Pampa, you're a, Texas, what? healing is on the way. Okay. You're a, what kind of doctor are you? Well, I actually do family practice, but I'm a, I have a doctorate of nurse practitioner is what uh -huh. I am. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a DNP. That's what we're so called. you came here for the first time? I did. Yeah. Yeah. I said, I don't mean to impose. I don't know if you have friends or family going, but is there a little bit of room for me? So. And what did, so let me go. what'd you think of the meeting? Well, um, have you been in a meeting like that? Never, never, no. Um, I, I was gonna say, if I can just say one thing, um, I get it now, like why she rejected me. It wasn't like she rejected the information when I, I was like, I don't even know how to tell you this right now, but you know, and, and I've always, I mean, I have been a believer, at least as an adult, um, and, but I didn't get it. And I just kind of stared at her like, I'm not sure she's hearing me. I was like, should I say it a different way? Like, that's how I was thinking in my mind. And, um, and genuinely, because um, I had prayed about it the night before, because, you know, there's just patients you, yeah. you can connect with, and yeah. she's one of them. Yeah. And I've always, you know, I prayed about it the night before. I was like, God, you know, give, give me wisdom of what to say, you know. And she rejected me. That's, hard. That's so. rough for Sunday morning people. Come on, Sunday morning. Wow. Wow. This. It's going to break loose. Get ready. Morgan. You say, what's that about? Desperate people do desperate things. See, until you're really desperate, you'll, you may just play with something. You get desperate, man, you'll, you'll, you'll try everything that you can that's in the scriptures. You'll get the cloth. You'll reach your hands out to the TV. You know, you'll get the oil. You'll get baptized again, Whatever. You'll do it. And when you're desperate, until you're desperate, you know, you'll, you'll treat it. You'll find a way not to have to, to surrender more of you to him. But you can get desperate with anything. You don't have to be dying to get desperate. Get desperate for his presence. Get desperate for another miracle notched on your belt. So you can tell people what things God has done. This is amazing. So what do you need here today? What do you... Um, well, I think I was just coming to be like healed of, for myself, just physically, as far as rheumatoid arthritis, but also just, you know, faithlessness. Oh, uh, you know, you can get, I mean, I have faith, but you're precious faith that God heals and you are precious. not listen to the statistics or the data or the, what pharmaceutical companies tell Give you. Give this woman a God bless you. Come on. Pow. Oh my God. Somebody.
Sunday morning, right here. Sunday morning. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's sing it. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. 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 I was, uh, you call the cataracts? Cataracts. I had a, about seven years ago. Seven I have years? A, I had a cataracts surgery. Yes. But doctor said it's going to be later on. Uh-huh. Cataracts are growing. Right. Come back. Yeah. But I have uh, this uh, right eye yeah. kind of, you know, fuzzy. Yeah. And it had to, uh, you know, bother me. Yeah. But last night you called, I was lying. I got healed. <laughs> This, this morning, this morning I woke up and uh, my eyes so clear. But also yesterday, uh, that was a Friday. Friday we first night we came here. Well, before I came, I was uh, really praying and uh, asking God. Yes. And I first time I got born again, God gave me the fire on the. You know, yeah. by the Holy Ghost and... Uh, ma'am, ma'am, you know what? That eye healing is amazing. Yeah, so, and anyway... Yes, that's amazing. <laughs> anyway... I, I said can't. it's amazing. <laughs> Help me right here. What's going on here? What happened? I got healed. It started the first day I was sitting over there in the corner. Uh-oh. I heard you... I've never seen you before, but I've always been amazed with this. Um, God, I can't even get it out, Lord. Take your time. I took him. My eyes had two things on them. I never accepted it. Two white, I, two. two white things on, right around the, oh, my. the brown part. Uh-huh. And I never accepted it. She knew about it, but she never accepted We never spoke it in the air. Uh-huh. Uh, these are prescription glasses that I just was prescribed this year. And I felt like these glasses, I drive an 18-wheeler. It made it You drive worse. an 18-wheeler? Yes. Uh-huh. And it felt like they made it worse. And I couldn't at first, I couldn't see you from back over there. No way. How far over there were you? Way back in the back over there. What were you doing way back there? You used to always sit in the back? No. I, I like to sit up front. That's what I was taught. <laughs> but why were you and, back there then? Because it was packed. <laughs> <laughs> and so... I took it, and I was sitting back there. There's and a every call time, on your life, you know that. I'm a pastor, oh. as well as I'm a prophet, by the grace of God. And the Lord... Everybody say, there's an olive leaf right there. Yes. And I took in... Did you hear that? Yes, sir. Yesterday, when you called about cataracts, I said, I'm not going down there. I said, I'm already healed. You said, accept it right there. You said, anything that's been rooted can be uprooted. <laughs> And I told God, I said, God, if you don't heal me, heal everybody in this room. I said, I wait. And when you when you began to pray, I felt God. I felt God's hands hit my eyes oh and my I started God. crying. Well, I drove home the first day without glasses. No problem. My daughter said, Daddy, you driving home without glasses? And I wasn't weaving or nothing. Was you was you? <laughs> Because <laughs> most of the time I drive without them, I start weaving. Well, the Who was in the day, car with you? Everybody. Oh, dear Jesus. 
Well, then I couldn't Call read. Uber for your family. You drive home. I couldn't. I uh-huh. could not see the street signs really. Uh-huh. Well, today I'm driving on the way to church. I told my wife yesterday. I said, "No, I'm not going today." I said, "We're not going to go because we're supposed to be celebrating our 28th anniversary, uh, uh, mm-hmm. Valentine's Day anniversary. We've been married for 27 years, and so." I just couldn't sleep, and I kept getting up, and I kept saying, I got to get to church. I got to get to church. I just got to go to church. I said, I'm missing something. And I came to church. My wife said, we were going to go over there. She said, no, we're going on that side today. And I wore tennis shoes because when you said that you was going to have somebody to come up there, I said, I'm making sure I can run. (laughs) (laughs) And so... You better give God a shout! So I got on the, the bus yeah. where the people bring us from the parking lot yeah. to over here, and I just began to witness and tell them that I got healed last night. At the bus stop? No. On the bus. On the, on bus, the, bus. the b- bus in the parking lot. So then afterwards, I said, God, why do you keep putting me back over there? You get to talking about the olive leaf, and everything started getting clearer. I'm reading license plates Hallelujah. on the way to church, and I'm saying, FMJ, this, this, this. And I'm like, Lord, you done did it. And I went to the mirror to look for those two white dots that were on my eyes. They are gone. But my wife got healed for something that I noticed on her, but I never said nothing about it. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I, um, I'm the type of person that don't really like going to the doctor unless it's a dying emergency. Yeah. And I had noticed uh, maybe a couple of months ago <laughs> that I had a big knot on my back. On your back, a big yes. knot. It was a big knot on my backside. I never said anything about it. So I just kept praying to ask the Lord to heal it and yeah. to remove it. And I didn't even know that he noticed it. I, you know, I had told him this morning, I said, well, I had a knot on my back. I said, the Lord healed it. And he said, yeah, I know. I kept rubbing and praying for it. I was like, oh, you knew? <laughs> so, you know, and, you know, I just kept uh, praying, praying about it. And then last night when you was, um, I think you were saying something about hernias, knots, and things like that. And I didn't even think about it because I yeah, was like, the yeah. Lord healed everybody else, yeah. you know, and then come heal me. Yeah. And so I was sitting back there, and so the Lord told me to touch my back. And I was like, oh, Jesus. I said, this, I said, it's leaving. It, it, it got about this, this small. And I was like, Lord God, I praise you for no. that. Yeah. Just the olive branch. And I said, I know you're going to complete it. That's right. Amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Amazing. Look at your husband. Look at this. You know why that word was given? There's a call on you. He doubts the call. He doubts that. You live with that. You bring that to his memory. As important as the healing and all this, that call that's on his life, on your life. Yes, sir. There's a healing deliverance ministry right here. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Come on, give God a big shout. Come on. What happened here? What happened here? Yes, um, on on Friday, um, we came here and we believe in victory for our granddaughter. And um, so on Friday. Hey, what would you say? Hey. Hey. Hey Billy Burke. Hey Billy Burke, she said. 
I don't even, have I met her? In the, just, no, she's just watched you over and over for about a, almost two months on the, on the TV we watched last oh, year's over and over and oh. over. And she says, I walk. Look at these little I braces walk. here on this little girl. So tell me about what happened. Um, so on Friday, we had taken her out of her wheelchair because we are standing in faith. And so when the lady came up here in the blue, yes. and she said, we had sat over there and she had talked to her she, and she was walking. She got up and she said, I walk, I walk. And she was grabbing hold of all the chairs and she was trying to walk up here. And so she is saying that she is not going back into her wheelchair and that she is healed. And I said, you, when we get up there, you're gonna tell them that you're healed? And she said, no, I'm gonna show them that I'm healed. So has she showed you? She's doing things, yes. She's standing up straighter um, with, um, with the spina bifida. She's and that with spina bifida. She's born, that's with the, the, the bone outside protruding. With well, the she was actually back. she was actually with doubled up in the womb. She had oh, surgery yes. surgery oh. in the womb. Like okay. And her legs were that big. Okay. And God has moved on her. Is legs. she able to walk right now? In Jesus' name, yes. Come on, girl. Show her how to walk. Yes. Come see me, baby. Come see me. Oh. Come on, come on, come on. Oh my! Come on! Oh! Slow down, slow down. And you're, you're, I'm grandpa. You're grandpa. We have custody of her. You have custody. We went and bought her shoes. We went and bought her underwear because she had, we went and bought her shoes and underwear and everything she needs because she had, you know, with spina bifida, you have trouble with bowel control yeah. and, and yeah. urinary tract. So we, she has everything normal. Where do you live, sir? In, in Indian land, South Carolina. South Carolina. You came all the way. Yes, sir. In South Carolina. <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're here, you know, and you, you may not need a healing, guess what? You help set the table. Yes. Your faith yes, you in this room, yeah. your presence. Hallelujah. You know, we, we need every ounce of faith Hallelujah. to pierce and break any hindrances. It's bigger than any one person, I'll tell you that. This here just, I, I don't know, I just want to sit down and cry about this. I'll tell you, it's, and her name one more time. Gabriella. Gabrielle. Look what you're doing, you're walking. Do you see that? Well, don't hit me. She likes high fives. She likes high fives. Huh? She likes high fives. She likes the high five. And she's the most joyful child. Oh, she's joyful. She's taking these steps of faith. Yes, probably. I want to stay in touch with you, please. Let's stay in touch. Yes. Want to see the progress of this? Yes. This is a done deal. It, it is. It's done. The lady that said to you, she did the shouting at home and jumping. She just came to pick it up. We came to pick it up. She said we came to pick it up. On one of the, on one of the tapes from last year, she said uh, that uh, she did all the jumping and shouting at home. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. just came to pick it up. Yeah. We came to pick yeah. it up. Give God oh, a big shout. Come on. <laughs> yes. Yes. Somebody else over here? Did I miss somebody? Quickly. Testimony right here. Come, big guy. Come, big guy. What happened here? Well, you know, on December the 21st, yes. I was so bad that I couldn't even get out of bed to go from the Excuse bathroom. Excuse me. Just a minute. Yes. Excuse me. Man, they, she couldn't do that before. She couldn't do this before without the braces. Not without the braces off. So this is all brand new. She couldn't do that. Come on, give somebody, give God a big shout. Amazing. You can tell that she's enjoying the, the movement. Yeah. She's gonna just pray for grandma and grandpa over there. She's gonna have them running around all over the place. So you had what now? COPD. I had diabetes. My, uh, right. My blood sugar was about 600. And I started watching you 
on TV, yeah. on Roku, oh. and Pastor George and Terry, and I soaked in it every single day. I watched everything in June over and over. I could tell you every person that was healed. You know, hallelujah, because I watched it to build up faith. Then the Lord sent me to a Holy Ghost Spirit-filled doctor, laid hands on my knee, yeah. that was healed. Yeah. And then my blood sugar, like I say, it went from 600 to 125. Oh! Hallelujah. My sugar, my blood pressure was 180 over something like, I don't know, it's 80 or something, but it went down to normal 120 over, you know, 80. Hallelujah. And God is still, I'm a work in progress. My, my gets nerve damage in my feet. I couldn't stand up before. I, I stood up two hours yesterday in the line and I prayed for Where four or five from? people. Where are you from? Northern California, but I'm a Texan. <laughs> Hallelujah. I got a prayer list. I just want you to agree with me. I won't say the names because I want to take up your time. But I'm believing for 10 people for miracles too. But my wife said, she told me it was prophesied to me, you're going to this meeting. I said, okay, the first time, but not really. You know. This meeting here. Yes. And she told me again. She says, you're going. I said, we don't have the money. She said, you're going. I said, okay, I'm going. Hallelujah. So I drove here. Hallelujah. From where? Sacramento? From no, uh, north of Redding, probably 90 miles in the mountain. Hallelujah. 1,600 miles. But guess what? It was worth it. Hallelujah. God said. What happened here? Oh, what's the cord? My word. Um, basically, this all happened to me on 9-11. 9-11. This year. And uh, I sat down in my first period class for school. Uh-huh. And then my legs just started feeling numb. Uh-huh. So I was working so hard in football and running and stuff, so I thought it was, my legs were just tired. And then when I went to my second period class, when I stood up to do the pledge, I fell down and couldn't walk. Hmm. The doctors think that he may have had a spinal cord stroke. Okay. At first they thought it was a viral infection called right. transverse myelitis, but now they're thinking it's a spinal cord stroke. Okay. But last night you had said about um, a paralyzed person. Yeah. And he's lost all function and yeah. everything from the waist down, bowel and bladder control. Um, he started feeling some things last night, so. Come on, come on, come on. Amazing. He, got his olive leaf. he what? He has his olive leaf. I'm sorry? He has his he olive leaf. He has the olive leaf. Yes. What were you feeling last night? I was feeling like a lot of tingling between here and, and stuff. He feel and the then touch. I was bored and then I was just like tapping my phone like on my knees yeah. like really lightly and I just started feeling it. He was. He was a three-sport athlete before all this. So he was what? A three-sport athlete. Three. You'll do it again. Yeah. Before you leave here this morning, I want you to try and walk out of the chair, okay? We'll have ushers around you. You won't get hurt. I can't pull you out there. I'm not allowed to do that, all right? But we will have you sitting right over here somewhere. I'm gonna, I'll be coming over. You be ready. I don't know when. We'll come over. Let's just make it happen today, okay? Yes, sir. Mama, we give you praise. I power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. My God. Yes. I had that. What happened? I had surgery. You had what? Surgery. Back surgery. Yes. Three weeks. Yes. We are fused. And, uh, you know, since then, he's been giving me problems, uh -huh. you know. And uh, last yesterday. Somebody has missing cartilage on your knees. There's, it's bone on bone. There's no cartilage on the knees. Who is this? There's no cartilage. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Help! <laughs> Help! <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, I, that's just so awesome. I mean, I was expecting 
you to call me last night, but I wasn't thinking about it this morning, but I'm going to take that too. It's going to be fixed. Yes! <laughs> oh, yes. It's fixing. It's fixing. You came from where? Somewhere. Kansas. <laughs> We watch you up there too. Yeah. <laughs> You're precious. Oh, thank you. Completely healed. Completely Praise the Lord. Old. Thank you, Jesus. Oh my. Thank you. Thank you. He's creating. He's creating cartilage, ma'am. Yes, thank you. He's creating sinew. Oh, thank you, Lord. Her faith is so hot; she yes, don't hear anything I'm yes, saying. Yes. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Doctor, how are we doing? I want to see how the doctor's doing. Come on, how are you doing? How do you feel? How do you feel? I have, no, I have zero pain actually at the moment. So, is that amazing? Yes. It, no. Yeah. It genuinely is amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Give the doctor a God bless you. Come on. Wow. This Holy Ghost, we give all this pain. This Holy Ghost. Just receive. Just receive. He scrapes everything clean. Everything clean, yes. This, mo this was the lady who was on the motorcycle last night. Ma'am, ma'am, huh? are you healed of the knees? Did you check the knees? Yes, they're feeling good. <laughs> Help her up. Help her up. Thank you. Yes. You is there they feel awesome. Is there anything else you need before you go home? Oh, anything? yeah. yeah just, I mean, yeah, sure. I, you want my whole list? No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> but right now we cover the motorcycle accident. Yeah. And the knees. Yes. Praise God. <laughs> Amazing. I know. I told my preacher I was coming down here to get healed. What's his name? Pastor Steve Todd. Oh, and which kind of church is that? Assembly of God. Assembly of God. Did uh -huh. he say okay? We're excited? He said okay. Somebody else told me not to be chasing a man. I said, I'm not. I'm chasing the anointing. Do not mess with that woman right there. Woo! That's right. That's right. The devil's learning that. See, she's, it just now hit her. She was <laughs> slain five minutes ago, but the power just hit her. Jesus. Yeah, it's just now hitting her. If you, if you wait, if you don't quit, if you hang in there. You know, some pieces of chicken don't cook right away. Come on, say amen. <laughs> if, you, if you hang in there. Come on, I mean that. See, you're in a hurry. You push that you know, reset button. You push the refresh button you change the radio you change the thermostat and, and while we're all after that we wait on him yes. we wait we don't wait with our faith we press with our faith yes. but that manifestation we wait for that to show up Jesus. Jesus. yeah yes you hit her Jesus. Jesus. she was trying to tell me what was wrong down in here and he, I, God already said to me I'm scraping it I'm cleaning Jesus. it Amazing. Somebody's, th somebody's thymus gland is being wonderfully healed. It's right down in the center here. It's, it's a key. Is that you, the thymus? Come here, quickly. The power of God's healing this thymus gland. Ma'am, you're just going to change your life. Hurry, hurry. How long have you had this issue? Oh, 22 years. 22 years. You take medication for this? Yes. <gasps> no more, no more, no more, no more, no more. Wow, bring me this man right here. What is it, sir? What's wrong with your Last leg? Last night I was in a line and my knees felt better. Yeah. But I want a complete healing this morning. So that you were, they were better last night? They were better last and night. Today? And then uh, this morning they started acting up. I felt better, but it, I need a complete healing. In well, I'm going to pray, but I need you all day today. This is Sunday, the Lord's Day. Yes, all sir. day today till midnight. Can you put your hands up high like that? Come on, say, I thank you. I thank you. I praise you. Yeah, I praise you. Now put some emotion into it. I thank you. I thank you. I praise you. I praise you. For my complete healing. For my complete healing. All day long. Somebody give him praise. Come on. 
What's the matter here? What's the matter here? The power's all over you. Do you hear me? That's the Holy Ghost. It's a power on this woman. Is this your mother? Talk to me. Talk to me. She has been struggling with her knee. She has diabetes. And every time she tried to walk out or just try to lose weight, her knee has been bothering She has type her. 2, right? Yes. And she flew in from Tanzania last She's week. She's what? She flew in from Tanzania last week for this. One more time. Tanzania. Tanzania. Yes. To come to this meeting. Yes. Come on, give God a shout. Wow. We've been praying. What? You, you've never laughed like that. <laughs> Billy, well, yes. I came here to get a new leg. And I got, actually, I came here for all of it. <laughs> my restoration from top of my head, bottom of my feet. I want my ministry back. I want everything I allowed the devil to steal from me back. I want my leg to match this. I want this leg to match this leg. What's wrong with it? It's, um, it had a bone disease. Uh-huh. I can't see here. Just a minute. I know. What do you have? What do you have? They look the same to me. Oh, your, your foot's a little shorter. Well, it's shorter and it's smaller. Uh-huh. And, um, if I didn't have these on, you could see it. <laughs> keep, no, keep those on, please. Keep those on. <laughs> and so, it's affecting my back as yeah. well as I... Yeah. As the numbers get a little higher. Yeah. Put your hands up. I'm going to touch you. You're going to feel bones move, okay? Oh, yes. Bones will begin to move in your feet. That foot's are going to change. We had one meeting. I think there was a half a dozen people grew arches. It might have been here. I don't know. Is that here? Thirteen people grew arches. Bones moved. Yeah, my arches fall too. Yeah, Holy Ghost touched this one. Oh, my God, the power on that woman. Ma'am, Tanzania, your mother's name? Elizabeth. Elisa? Elizabeth. Uh-huh. She lives in Tanzania. She came in July for the Southwest Believer Conference. Yes. And then when she flew home, I was here last year. I was healed with fibroids standing over there. Right over here. Yes. And I told my family all about you it. You told your whole family. And my brother, because he's the one who introduced me to Kenneth Copeland to become oh, a my. partner. So we've been convincing her to come in with my father. My father said no, because he yeah. has hearing issues. And he said, I yeah. don't hear anyway when yeah. I come. Yeah. She agreed. She had what? She agreed to she come. She agreed to come. Yes. So you, so, you, you, you bought two plane tickets? What, no, we were begging of my dad to come with her, but he decided no. So we only bought for her. My brother lives in Virginia, so we all kind of put together and have her come. Where you live here? I live in San Antonio. Okay, San Antonio. Yes. She's in Tanzania. She's in Tanzania. She flew in last Sunday uh -huh. just to come to this. And oh. yesterday I told her, because we were get, sitting behind. Yeah. I said, we're going to come early today. We're going to sit in front. So that, with the, like I just felt it. And when you call the cat lady and she was like, what? And I'm like, mom, that's you. You're such a sweet girl. What, what do you do? What do you do? You a student? I'm a nurse. You're a nurse. I'm going to school for my, my master's right now. I should be a psychiatry nurse right now. But I'm, I'm a nurse right now in San Antonio. He's going he's gonna to anoint you to bring healing to people. You're not just a nurse. You're a hands-on healing woman. That's who you are. <laughs> Your hands on healing woman. <laughs> Some let her go. The power's on that woman. My God. Bring the mother up. I want to talk to the Tanzania woman. Bring her up quickly. I don't even know her name. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. My God, Elizabeth, you came a long way. Yeah, Tell me how, walk, walk, Elizabeth. Show me how that. Oh my God, Elizabeth, walk. The power's all over this woman.
You are? I'm healed. Huh? I'm healed. I'm healed. Totally healed. I'm fine. Oh. Oh, I couldn't work this knee. They, they told me I was supposed to get a knee replacement, but I refused. I said those are the doctor's words, but my Lord says something else, that I'll be healed. Oh, well, the power's you. all over you. I thank, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, oh, God. oh my Lord. Watch her, watch her. Here she goes, here she goes, here she goes. Whoa. Woo. My, 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 my. You're in line, sir? Testimony? What happened to you? Well, two years ago, they told me that I needed to have knee replacement surgery and there wasn't any cartilage there. My wife and I have been believing that God would grow the cartilage back. And when you said that, I just took it. And as I was walking down the aisle here, there was no pain. I've had pain in my knee for two or three weeks. And as Woo! I was walking down here, there was no pain. It's gone. It's Hold up. Pat, Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody give me praise! Yeah, wow. 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 You know, if you're going back that much under the power, watch this, if you're going back that much, <laughs> right? We got great catchers here. Why fight that? Just, we'll bring you back. Bring the, bring the, the daughter up. Your, your mother, your mother, your mother got healed while you were down. Your mother. All that work, all that Tanzania trip, all the seeds you planted. Oh, you, you leaving here carrying the seed of healing, the message of hope, oh. paid off. That's the beginning of your ministry. You remember this day. I do. You can say when you're telling people that it worked on my mama, it worked on me. It'll work oh. on you. That's it. That's it. Yes. Come on, say it. It worked on my mama. It worked on my mama. It'll worked on me. It'll work on you. On he you. is the Lord. He is the Lord. Who healed me? Who healed me? Come on, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. What he's done for others, he'll do. Come on, arms wide open. Who's that now? Which, which, who's making the noise? The daughter. She's having a happy moment. Her mama got healed. She got healed. Leave her have a happy moment. Oh, I praise you, Lord. I praise you. The power of your words did this. The power of your words did this. I give you honor. The power of all of our words does this. Oh, I give you glory. You can do what she did. She told somebody glory. what she saw, what happened to her. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, my Lord. Amazing. Just amazing. Give me that big guy right over here. That lace, stay, you're okay there. You're, you happy? 
Very happy. How happy are very, you? Very, very happy. How happy? Oh, very happy, my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You have done it for me. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so happy. So happy. I thank God. Oh, this is the happiest moment for me. I couldn't walk properly. I couldn't move. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes it's just good to listen to the sound of freedom. Sometimes it's like listening to the Battle Hymn of the Republic or the Star Spangled Banner. Our flag was still there. You get that, you get that feeling, that carbonated percolation, our flag was still there. The victory feeling. When, when, some, when one of our own, one of our own people in the body gets this touch. Why? Because we hear all kinds of sounds out there that aren't positive. All kinds of aches and moans and groans and complaints and every other commercial is something about a disease or if you have this warning sign, one out of every four Afro-American men over 40. If you're a single woman, your chances of contracting thus and so. It's all those sounds. So to come into a meeting on a Sunday morning, to start the week, and hear the sound of freedom. All the way from Tanzania. I don't know how far most of you came today, but I don't think you can match Tanzania. <laughs> Amazing. Are you happy, though? You're, I'm very you're, happy. I don't want any complaints when you go back to Tanzania about this. Oh, I have nothing to complain, just to praise my Lord. What church do you go to in Tanzania? Do I you go to a Talita ministry. Okay. And pa you have a pastor, a bishop? What do no, you have? no, no. What? I'm just a... Oh, you have your own church? No, I don't have a church. What, you go to a but, church? Huh? Do you have a pastor? Yeah, I have a pastor. And what's his name? Do you know his name? Or? His lightness. Mm -hmm. She's lightness. Oh, she's what? Lightness. It's a lady pastor? Yeah, pastor? she's a lady pastor. Wonderful. And, and she's you a lady pastor. She's what? A lady pastor. A lady pastor. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to tell her about this? I'm going to tell everybody about this. Everybody will know. Because many people knew I don't have any movement. Yeah. That's why I still, I kept on gaining weight because I don't move so much. Yeah. Do you celebrate Christmas over in Tanzania? Yeah. Do you celebrate Christmas? Yeah, I do. Put your hands up. Here's Christmas in February. You ready? Yeah. Yes. It's true. Very true. By Christmas, 35 pounds is coming off. Oh! Now, personally, I don't care what you weigh, well, how you, that's up to you. When it comes to health, I care. I care, it's a health issue. Because the bigger you are, it's all putting pressure on that one pump you have. This pushes that blood out. I care about that. That's my only thinking here. That's my only thinking. So don't leave your thinking that, I, you know, one, I got a letter from somebody that said, you don't like heavy people. I said, I love everybody, excuse me. They said, well, why'd you tell that lady to lose weight? I said, because it was killing her. If you come to me for help, I'm going to give you not just a prayer, but the truth. Okay? Right? I had one lady come up. I said, ma'am, and she said, my heart's jumping out of my chest. I said, how long has it been like that? She said, for many years. So I went to pray for her, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and he said, that lady you're about to pray for is drinking over 20 cups of coffee a day. So I pulled my hands back. I said, ma'am, could I talk to you for a moment? She says, Billy, just pray. <laughs> In other words, she didn't want to hear nothing. You got to want not just prayer, but you want to want ministry. Bear yourself open. This team here at Eagle Mountain, Pastor George, and these are gifted people. They move in these gifts. Uh, there's more on the way. I mean, there's no escape here. 
I mean, you, you, miss, you, you may get out of this meeting, but the custodian is going to get you healed on the way to the bathroom. It says that they escaped Elijah's sword. They ran into one of his servants, and he got them. This property is going to be wall to wall. You won't have to come into the sanctuary to feel this. You'll feel it the moment your front tires hit the road that comes into the property. I mean it. This thing is nowhere near where it's going to be. It's great, but it's, oh my God, it's just going to get so much, the temperature. Oh, oh. Sir, what's going on with you? Cartilage in the knee. Uh, did, it, did it grow back? Uh, it's, it's doing it. Um, you know, it started basically Friday night. Uh, Pastor Greg and Michelle was talking at the end of the uh, service. We were, um, we were watching on Roku. Yeah. Uh, live in Missouri. And uh, Pastor Greg... And Michelle said, the anointing is here. You need to Beautiful, get here. beautiful. Uh, yesterday morning, I told my wife, I said, we need to go. But we had prior commitments where we couldn't make it last night. Sure. We watched last night. And Pastor Greg and Tim was talking again last night. Yeah. And uh, then I told my wife, I said, uh, we got to go. Yeah. And we... Sir, just tell me what happened with the knees. Well, what, what's going on with uh, the knees? The, but, but anyway, the, uh, the young man that was up here bouncing this morning. Yeah, I saw that. Wasn't uh, that amazing, right? Yes. And then I started bouncing, and I haven't been able to bounce. Uh, there you go. Because of my knee, I haven't been able to stand my, very my long God. You're bouncing now, though, right? Yes, sir. And at the same time, my back starts hurting. Uh, but we left last night at 1130. We pulled in here at 10 minutes till 9 this morning, uh, 615 miles. Oh, my God. And we're, we're here. Are you moving those legs? Are you moving the legs? I don't want you moving the wheels. I want you to be moving your legs. Move yeah. your legs for me. Come on. Just move the legs. I'm talking to this kid in the wheelchair here. I want you to move your legs. Come on. Move them. So, I'm coming over to get but you. But as a result of it, I've been bouncing and... Uh, You're just a bouncing here. kind of guy here this morning. Uh, yes, sir. And, uh, where, where do you live 600 miles away? Where at? Uh, east of Kansas City, uh, Knob Nostrum, Missouri, uh -huh. uh, right there in uh, Whiteman uh, uh -huh. Air Force Base. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I'm not in the military, you know, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. we left, and here we are. You know, and when it's over with, i got to be at work tomorrow, and we'll drive the nine hours back. This <laughs> Come on, give him a mighty shout. Oh, come on, sir. You've been standing in line here. We're going to have you all come up here in a moment. Yeah, right here. What's, what? yeah, um, I've worn out the cartilage in my right knee, yeah, and yeah. mostly in my left knee, and I, I came for that, and I, I came also because... Somebody I'll has a faulty pacemaker. Your pacemaker is not doing what they put it in your chest to do. And that's why you have it in there, but it's not performing. It's not giving you the rhythm that's supposed to. Where are you? You must come. You must come today, this morning, quickly. Where are you? Come to me. Come to me. Whoever this is, quickly. Get him up here quickly. This, is it this woman right here? Yes. Ma'am, tell me about this. Hurry. What, tell me about the pacemaker. I've had it since 2012, and I've got two doctors right now. One says everything's fine. The other one says nothing's fine. With the heart. Right. With the pacemaker. With the pacemaker. Come on, somebody give God a shout. I don't know which doctor told you which, but doctor number one or doctor number two, but the, the, the Holy Ghost just said, yes. and he's the real doctor, yes. the pacemaker's not working. So whichever doctor that shoe fits, that's... That's the doctor you, you have a lot of more trust in, the one that says it's not working. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to touch you. Okay. Are you I ready? For, yes. You know what's going to happen? Exactly what I've been asking God for. What? I want his pacemaker and get rid of this. Power! Come on, give God a shout! Oh, my God! Woo! 
You know, I'm asking a lot of you where you're from. It's not that I'm nosy. That's a Pennsylvania word. I think you may all use that. But it's just that we're so excited what's happening here. And we're trying to get a bearing of where all these people are coming from. Because it's exciting. You know, the case of Brother Kenneth Copeland's ministry is so far-reaching. And the EMIC, bro- how many watch the EMIC broadcast? Do you watch that? It's amazing, the far-reaching tentacles of this ministry. Uh, who are you? You're in Russia, right? Her husband. Oh, you're the husband? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You're her husband? Yes. Okay. Yes. You had a picture on. What's, you, you work here? Why do you wear the picture? <laughs> I'm a volunteer. Here? Here. Awesome, mm-hmm. awesome. It says you're local. Yes, uh-huh. uh-huh. I want you to bring your wife up here to me just one more time because she's right here in the center. Oh, my. Oh, take it easy. How do you feel now? <laughs> I don't think I know the words to tell you how I feel right now. I just... Try me. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good with words. Try me. <laughs> Amazing? Yes. Amazing. Very good. Yes. Like I said, I'm expecting this thing to disappear and God to show up with a new one. Mm. It already happened. Yeah. Yes. Good. It's already happened. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. It is no secret. What God can do, it is no secret what God can do. That's so simple for him. What he's done for us. Come on, he'll do. He'll do for you. Put our arms with us. Secret. It is no secret what Amazing. Well, what are we going to do here? Well, I, it's the meniscus, and I had surgery, and it didn't work, and now this leg is locked up. See how this one can go back? And this yeah. One can't. So the meniscus is the top of your kneecap. It's, it's the, 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 the x-ray says that it's almost bone on bone. Uh-huh. Which knee is that? Also, I need a new bladder. Okay. Been bad since I was five. Let's just get a new one instead of keep repairing this old Let thing. me check and see if we have any bladders in. Let me oh. check and see. <laughs> <laughs> we have three in stock. Part. We have three in stock. <laughs> You're right. I just need one. <laughs> so there's two more here. You need to come pick it up before the... They're going very quickly. Come on, hurry up. There's one more. Hurry up, quickly. My God, they're going to fight over the third one. Praise the Lord. I know you got a new bladder for me. Yeah, what are you here for, ma'am? Bladder. What are you here for? Let me check one more time with inventory here. Put your hands up all over the place. Mm. Mm. Amazing. The power's all over every one of you. When you began to walk up here, God began to give you a new bladder. A brand new bladder. A brand new bladder. A brand new bladder. 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 Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. Come on, give God a shout. Amazing. This, this, yeah, so awesome. So awesome it is. So awesome. What's going on here, sweetheart? I need that new bladder. Oh, you're here for the bladder too? Yes. (laughs) And what makes you say you need a new one? 
I I need I feel something here. I don't know. I need a new plan. I I had a you surgery. I had surgery yeah. more many years. I think more. Than you need heal. You don't need a new yes, bladder. You need the one you have healed. Yes, I heal. Okay. And also my stomach. You have what on your stomach? I had inflammation after my uh, mm -hmm. hysterectomy three years ago. How long? Two years ago. Three years ago. So you in pain here? Yes, I have pain a lot. Is there pain there now? No. <laughs> No. I know. I need restoration. <laughs> huh? I need a new restoration for all my body, for all my stuff. You're fine. You're fine. You're absolutely fine. You really are. Oh, my God. In the wheelchair here. Who's the lady with a big brace on here? What is this? What is this? Let me see. Man, what is it? My God, your arm, your leg, what happened to you? She, uh... She has can't. everything you've called for. The hearing, I made her leave her hearing aids at home because I said, you're not going to need them. We're going out there. You're going to be healed. She has a broken hip, a broken ankle. How'd that all happen, though? Well, it started out, she fell out of bed at night and split her head and broke her arm. So that's after, the broken arm here? Yeah. Uh -huh. And after she got it out of the cast, uh -huh. I had fixed breakfast for her. She came in to eat, and she leaned up against the cabinet and said, I'm dizzy, I'm dizzy, and I yeah. went to grab her. Yeah. And she fell down, but her foot stayed flat on so the she, floor, so she broke the socket in her ankle. Over here? Yeah. On this and So leg. she was in the hospital for that yeah. and was scheduled to go to the rehab facility, right. and she fell out of the bed at the um, hospital uh, yeah, yeah. and crushed her hip, and so... And One of the, the greatest parts of healing ministry is listening. One of the greatest things you can do, Jesus was an amazing listener. It shows a level of caring because most people don't want to hear your troubles. Really, they don't. When you start talking about your troubles, they're drifting to, hey, well, you know what, we're going to have to get together sometime. And I thought we were together right here a minute ago, you know. People don't want to, they don't have time. And sometimes you think healing is just about touching people and all that. It's not. It's identifying with people. Jesus took the time to write in the dirt and he just listened. He was just listening there, tuning some things out and just listening. Because within people, the Bible says what the counsel of God is already in your heart, it's the spirit that draws it out. Already inside of you, there's, there's a way out. For you there's a way out mm. this is this is horrible here I, I before all this happened yeah what church do you go to where you guys what church do you guys three go to? rivers assembly of god uh -huh. in uh pascagoula mississippi pascagoula mississippi right on the gulf coast next to the alabama line my god that's wow how'd you know about this meeting how'd you hear I've watched you on TV, okay. and she was in the nursing home, and oh. you were going to be here, so I got my You took her out of the nursing home? And put a mattress in my dad's van. My and God. put her in the van. And That's a homemade came. camper right there, I'll tell you. Yeah. In the hospital 75 days. 75 days in the hospital. But before this, she's been 20 years on prescription narco for fibromyalgia. Before we close pain. today, the Holy Spirit, I, I, like I said, I didn't get to bed till 5 a.m. today, 5 a.m. And as I was falling asleep and then as I was getting awake, he told me this morning that he wants to heal people here before the end of this service that are having side effects of medication. I've never, I've never in my life ever said such a thing. In any meeting anywhere. So if anybody here, before we close, I want to have you come up here. There's going to be a lot of you, I would assume. But don't come yet. But you're having some kind of side effects of medication. He's going to touch you this morning. He's going to touch you this morning. So what about your hearing? Quickly here, because we're running out of time. What, what's? I can't hear. Well, you're hearing me. I can a little, if I'm looking at you, I can read your lips. You're reading my lips. And it's not easy if you talk fast. Uh-huh. But Well, the let me talk a little slower. Okay. You know what? This brace here, how long have you had this on? December 22nd. Uh, December 22nd. Have you ever taken that off? Oh, yeah. I can, I can 
can take it off at night when I bathe. Why can't you take it off here? I can. Well, wait, 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 wait. I'm not, you know, you, I want you to be able to, if you want to do that. Well, it You might. want to walk? Can you walk with it? She wants to walk. I don't this know. Knee has no Let me get the ears, Papa. Let me get here and get these ears. Here, hold it. There's no hearing aids in there. Where's your hearing aids? At home? Yeah. How much I, you pay for those hearing aids? They were about five grand. Five, that yeah. seems to be the going rate, they, just five they, grand. Or the kind. She wanted to get them serviced, but yeah. she has to go. The, the she'll she'll never test. need them again. Hallelujah. She'll Thank never you. need them again. Thank you, Jesus. That power of the death. Be thou loosed! <laughs> Opened right up. Is that amazing? Yes. Huh? Yes, it is. You're shocked. Yes. I've sat through this whole thing and I've not heard half of what y'all said. Thank you for your prayers. Oh, look at this. Look at this. The, mm -hmm. the fibromyalgia is bad. What? The fibromyalgia is bad, but the not being able to hear your children is horrible. But if anyone gets better, I'm happy. I want it all, though, because I know that I live and serve a God who said, I can have it all. And I've got within arm's distance of being prayed for and it would be shut down and I wanted to quit, but back here he said, you come this far, don't quit now. You wouldn't quit before. Why you want to quit now? And I said, because I'm hurting. <laughs> no more nursing home for you. No more. We're done. You're coming home. She's coming home. Is that all right? She's coming home. That's why you brought her. Do you want to, you want to try and walk or you want to wait for another day? What do you want to do? I can try. Let's try. Dave is going to give me a song up there. It goes something like... Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. Glorify. weak because you're out of shape like yeah. a lot of us here today. Don't worry about that. I'm very weak. Don't worry about that. Okay. You're doing great. Look at you. You're standing up. Mm -hmm. Let's stand on your own. Let's just stand on your own a moment. Leave her go. Look at you. Standing on your own. Go ahead. We got catchers. Go ahead. Take a couple steps. Yeah. Hey, you got a big olive leaf today. Yes. You happy? I am. This You're... years of joy. Wow. For 75 days, I've laid in a bed and not been able to do much of anything. 
I have a screws in both ankles. You have what? I have a screws in both ankles. They're disappearing. <laughs> and my knees have no cartilage. You have what? My knees have no cartilage. Yeah, well, they do now. <laughs> and my elbow and my shoulder have been replaced. Uh -huh. how, do you feel, how do you feel, though? Move around. I feel okay. No pain. No pain. No pain. Huh? I'm nervous. You're nervous. Why are you nervous? I don't know. I guess I've had so many setbacks. Yeah. You get scared. <laughs> you get used to setbacks. Yeah. Okay. You're being set up today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm you have ready. a setback for a comeback, right? I'm a comeback. You're a comeback girl. Yeah. And your husband here, where's he at? Right here. You're excited to have her back home? <sighs> yes. I hadn't been there yet. <laughs> he took it, picked me up from the hospital and brought me here. Yeah, where are you, where are you gonna go when you leave here? You wanna go home? Home, home. You wanna go, go home? home for a little while, for mm -hmm. whatever, for, from now on. I don't wanna go back to her, the rehab. I don't wanna go back. I don't wanna take medicine anymore. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. Glorified. Glorified. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you. God is so good. He's so good here at Eagle Mountain Church. I go sit down now. Pastor George, where are you, Pastor George? How do we end these days? They, they, we don't end them. I guess we just continue them. We keep on. Look at this. Let me get the lady with the cane, Pastor George, then we'll... What's going on here, ma'am, with the cane? Bladder and shoulder. Well, why do you have the cane, though? So I don't fall down. <laughs> well, what, what, why would you have the cane? Are you, are you weak? Are you dizzy? Yes. What? My knees. They hurt now? No, they just give out. They're giving out right now? N no. Uh -huh. Why not? I'm just asking you, why not? They're just not now. They're just not. <laughs> okay. Where are you from? Tyler, Texas. Where? Tyler, Texas. Tyler, Texas. Tyler, Tyler, Texas. You okay, ma'am? What's wrong, ma'am? You okay? What's going on with you? I'm looking at you. Oh, uh, I've got a bl bladder thing and kidney thing. I end up in the hospital quite often with, with UTIs. Plus, uh, I'm, I don't have any I, I'm bone on bone on this knee. And it. Ma'am, ma'am, have you checked it since we called that out an hour ago? Have you checked it? It takes God like nanoseconds to grow a cartilage. Oh, yeah. Have you checked it? No. I, Check I, it. I, Hurry up. I don't know. All I know is my leg goes... Don't worry about the way it looks. Tell me how this... Does it hurt? Yeah. It does? Yeah. You sure? No. It's grinding. It's not hurting, though. It grinds and clicks, and then it locks up on me, and then I can't walk. But it's not hurting. Not if I stay still. Stand up. Come on. Give me your hand. And I also fell this morning. Don't worry about that. Yeah, I got a lump on my head. Don't worry about that. You're living in the past. Come on, let's go. It's still hurt. I shoulder. know. Come on. You're with me now. Nobody's going to hurt you. The big bear did not get you. The wolf didn't get you. The snake aren't going to get you. Holy Ghost going to get you. Holy Ghost going to get you. Come on, lady. It is no sin. Why? Walk by yourself. What is, what is done for others? Come on, walk. Walk. Pick your knees up. Come on. With a side open. Hey. It is no secret. Come on, wet God. Good? 
Yeah, I can walk without a cane. I know. I, can see, just, I see you doing that, but just how you feel. I feel all right. My toes, though, You're, are, are, are gnarled. Well, you didn't tell me about your toes. Well, you didn't uh, give didn't me a ask. chance to. <laughs> yeah. I had nerve, da nerve damage to my toes and to my legs from a car accident over 50 years ago. And With your I knees. Was... Tell me about your knees, though. Huh? Your knees are pretty good. Your knees right now feel pretty strong. They go sideways. Don't worry how they go, how they feel. Strong. Sore. Sore. Yeah. And my shoulder is sore because I've got a torn rotator cuff there. And I, the doctor said he can't operate. It's too torn. I need oh. a new shoulder. And I said, well, God can give me a new shoulder okay. and a new knee. Let's go for it. And a new back. I've yes. had a broken neck, broken back. Broken pelvis and broken sacrum three times. In a multiple choice, sometimes it says all of the above. Yep. Give her a big God bless you. Come on. Touch her, Master. I pray you touch her, touch her. Remove all this horrible inflammation. And all that pain leave her body. And all the fear. No more fear. No more terror. By day or by night. Let there be peace in her whole frame. Peace in the frame. Whew, wow. I came down from Vermont. From Vermont? What, what city? Um, no city. Well, uh, there's a city in Vermont that you live in. Well, a town. A town. What's the town's name? Barton. Barton, okay. Up by the Canadian border. I know where that's at. Mm -hmm. Well, you know that. I know that. Okay. I was determined I was going to get down here. How'd you get here? Fl I flew. You flew? By yourself? Yeah. By yourself? Yeah. Give her a big God bless you. Come on. Something's happening here to your body, you know that. He's touching you. Touch, we can't stay like this, okay? <laughs> Thank you. You're precious. You. You're precious. I appreciate it. Give God a big shot for this lady right here. No pain. No. No pain. No pain. No pain on this woman right here. No pain, no cane. No cane. Where's the cane at? Where'd her cane go? Oh, who threw it up there? It's my job to throw it up there. What's wrong with you? You don't need the cane? You're no. done. I'm done. I just wasted 10 bucks on a cane. You wasted what? 10 bucks on a ten cane bucks. to get here. Because <laughs> I left mine at home. Let me see you walk with power right over there. Just walk like you don't even need the cane. Come on. Come on, give him praise. Look at this lady. Wow. Oh, my. Yes, ma'am, quickly. Hi, I'm back. You're what? I'm back. I have to thank you again. I kind of used the knees as an excuse to come up because I did have five years ago, they told me I had needed bilateral knee replacement. Uh -huh. And the Lord told me the next morning that he would supply all this cartilage to all of my bones. I do have had a lot of issues with my legs and my feet. And what I need to thank you for is last time I gave my testimony about being delivered from the voices. Yes. And you touched me before I could finish and tell you what I was there for. Yes. I forgot what I was there for, but I woke up the next morning. And for years, I've had edema in my legs and my ankles. And yes. people here know my, they would be worried. They'd say, you know, we're worried about your, my left ankle would swell up all like that. My feet were swollen and everything. And uh, I woke up the next morning. I looked down at my feet. Oh, my. What? And they stayed that way. And um, what was it two Sundays ago when we had that wonderful outburst of, of glory and yeah, praise? Yeah, I heard about that. I was in choir for yes. an hour and a half. We stood. Yeah, I heard my that. My feet hurt. My back hurt and everything. But 
I didn't have any swelling. Hallelujah. And I wanted to thank you for that ministry because things that you taught, things that you taught have helped me. And these are olive leaves for me, and I'm glad for what you said today because I'm standing for a lot of things. But one thing that I really would like to have today is I would like to have the pain gone from my neck down through my feet. That they, one of the diagnoses at that time five years ago was degenerative arthritis. Uh, right. So from your neck to your feet, is it hurting my now? Neck feet. No. It's, it's, it's crepitus. It's, it's clicking. What? Where'd my it go? Feet, my ankles. Where did it go in the neck? Where did it go? <laughs> I want my sight, my hearing too. I'm a singer and I need to hear. I was 80 two weeks ago, and the Lord's been reversing my age. And I've got things to do. Can't wait anymore. You what? I can't wait anymore. I need. I've got things to do. I've got assignments. And this is stopping. And I don't want to be stopped. I want to do what He wants me to do when He wants me to do it. Amen. Amazing. I have all grace and favor coming to me that I have all sufficiency in all things and under every circumstance yeah. requiring no outside aid. Somebody give God a big shout. Come on, one more. That's it. One more. Hurry. You're together? Are you together? No. What is it? Hurry up quickly. Can I just, uh, uh, neck, uh, cartilage. And I, I came for those things to be healed, yeah. uh, Billy. Yeah. But um, what I've realized, what I, I, I really am here for is I'm a Methodist pastor and to bring real faith, fire, and the Holy Spirit wow! back to me. Wow! Come on! Come on! Come on! We had it, Billy. You know, let me, let me just make a comment here. Revival, revival, I've been around the well. I mean, my story I shared at the Pensacola Revival, we can get it back there, by the way, I don't know how many we have left. It's the only place that I've really shared my story in detail. But those revivals went for months and years in Toronto, months and years, and people often ask me, say, so, what do you think of those? I say, if I had to do something for years, or if I could take a spirit of revival that just stays in the church, I would take the one that stays in the church. Amen. That's what you have here. Yes. There's no off Sundays. That's right. Amen. There's no bad Wednesdays. I mean, every time you come in here, it's supercharged. I mean, the expectancy in these every service is just going to be off the charts. You'll be like I was as a young kid, just taking my friends into the Catherine Kuhlman meetings, you know, and you, that's what you're going to be, many of you. You're going to be that, that person that brings people into a presence that they can't create themselves. Do you feel it here this morning? Yes. It's amazing, isn't it? It's so, it's so, Methodist man, put your hands up. You're the Methodist man. Yes, sir, I am. Oh, my God. You're going to bring back power, fire power. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you're going to get sermons on the fire of God. That's Amen. Right. Sermons Amen. on Amen. the fire of God. Come on, you're it. You're the last. You're the caboose of the day. Come on, what's happening here? Hi. I've had uh, a spot in my right knee that has been bone on bone for a number of years. Yes. I took my healing for that this morning, and yes. it's no pain. No pain! <laughs> so I can jump up and down. 
no You're problem. precious. I want all those people with side effects from medication. Come right now. Come, 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 come. Side effects from medication. Hurry up quickly. Side effects. Side effects from medication. We can't tell you when to go off that, but only your faith can, right? Only your faith can do that. We can't do that. But this side effect stuff has got to go. It's got to go. Got to go. Hands up, all of you here that are for the side effects. Holy Spirit, today you spoke early in the wee hours of the morning that people would be set free from side effects of every kind of medication. Nerve medicine, blood pressure medicine, sleep aid issues, any kind of pain medication. Oh God, we ask for a wave of your anointing to move over these people this morning. And God, begin to eradicate that side effect. Let that side effect begin to diminish the vertigo, the dizzy, the weak, the incoherent, the lazy eye, the lazy mind, the foggy thinking, foggy brain, foggy thinking is leaving right now. Foggy thinking, clarity of mind, clarity of thought, sharp thinking, sound mind. Come on, somebody say sound mind. Sound mind. I take it now. I receive it now. Jesus name. Jesus. Come on, give him a mighty praise. Go ahead, y'all. Come here. Go ahead, back to your seats if you would, please. And what, what, what we want to do is we're going to receive an offering. Oh. Another offering. Another offering. Yes, sir. And I'm also going to receive partners, so I'm working for you now. Oh. <laughs> and uh, have you been blessed? By these times that we've had together with Billy Burke. Woo. Praise God. Amazing. Praise God. So what we're going to do, we'll receive our offering. Now, those of you that need an envelope, just raise your hand. Uh, or actually, there's one in the seat pocket in front of you. If you're on the front row, raise your hand. We'll get one to you. And if you're making out a check, make it payable to EMIC. Um, and we'll make sure that Pastor Billy receives this entire offering. Um, those of you who are... Oh, if, if you want to be a partner with Billy Burke Ministries, all you have to do is on your envelope, just write down your name, your address, and say, I want to be a partner with Pastor Billy. And we will make sure that all of that gets to you. We'll send all of those names to you. And you can make contact with them. They've already given permission for that. And the same thing for those of you that are watching uh, on any of our outlets, go to Billy Burke Outreach uh, Center. Center? BillyBurke.org. Uh, uh, BillyBurke.org. Okay. BillyBurke.org. Um, and just go on the website. You'll see a, a, a section there that says partnership. And then you can click on become a partner from partnership. And I just believe your partners are multiplying. Oh, I <laughs> they're multiplying because these offerings that we've received, they're launching you. It's a launch. It's a launch. We all want to come to, what do they call it, Cape Canaveral again? Yes. Or is it Cape Canaveral? Cape Kennedy now. Cape Kennedy. What or is it now? Nassau, I don't know. Cape anyway, they don't know either. So we want to come down to the launch pad, and we want to we want to see you take off. Wow! Into the next, into the next realm, into the next sphere, into the next universe. Amazing. So those of you also, if you're giving by text, it's three six six zero nine three six six zero nine, and the keyword is EMIC guest, and then the dollar amount EMIC guest. And the dollar amount. We so love you. We so appreciate you. We love you. Thank you. We Thank you, you for what you bring. I really love what that woman said about her pastor said, well, don't go chasing a man. Yeah. She says, I'm not chasing a man. I'm chasing an yeah, anointing. That's right. That's powerful. That's very powerful. That's powerful. That lady's very powerful. <laughs> she is. She is. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, yeah. we pray over Pastor Billy, Melanie, and thank you for them. And thank you for the deposit 
and the fire that has been lit here in this church. And we bless them. Thank you, Jesus. We bless them in the days to come. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, we look forward to when they're coming back. In Jesus' name.